Hello, uh, thank you for coming to 15 Minutes of Fame. My name is Robert Voise. I am the director of 15 Minutes of Fame. Uh, 15 Minutes of Fame is 15 one minute works that are written for a specific musician or ensemble. Uh, today is gonna to be 15 pieces that were specifically written for oboist Ava Wirth. Uh, we put out a call for scores um, and she received, if I remember correctly, something like 80 to 90 different submissions. Uh, and then she went and she picked uh, her, uh, her 15 that um, she wanted to play for you that we're going to listen um, now. Um, I'll probably, uh, Ava Wirth is a fabulous uh, oboist. I'm happy to be working with her. She's part of uh, the Blank Experiment, which is a fabulous ensemble of um, musicians that all get together to play uh, new music by living composers. Um, meanwhile, uh, I wanted to do our uh, first composer, um, will be uh, William Price. What a great start. Thank you, Ava. And I would like to bring on next um, a composer, uh, Matthew Williamson. Let's see 
you there. Hi, Robert. Hi, everyone. <laughs> How are you doing, Matthew? You caught, you caught me napping slightly. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for being here. Uh, where do you hail from? Uh, from? From London, England, I'm from. Yeah. Excellent. It's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, yeah, and I guess that, you know, that's a great way to note um, Matthew's in uh, London. I'm here in New York City, and Ava is out in the Midwest, and I completely forgot what city she's from but she will she can tell us later um matthew why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself and um, this piece sure so, so uh i'm matthew i'm from london england i've been writing music uh, most of my life but um it's really only in the last couple of years that i've started getting a bit more confident trying to write a bit more and take on some bigger projects I've done quite a bit for 50 minutes of fame it's interesting challenge fighting pieces in one minute um so yeah I, i'm sort of uh i feel like i've been doing this a little bit of time but actually very much at the start of try, trying to do it a little bit more and a little bit more publicly um but um anyway on, on onto the piece uh, i'm quite interested in contemporary music and the role that it plays um uh, and what people are trying to do with it and i think you know a big part of that is experimenting and trying out new things exploring um, but I, I think um, one of the things that makes that really hard is that you know the more people do that, that sort of thing, the, the more extreme you have to become to be new. And uh, one of the ideas behind this piece was actually, you know, it's great to be new, but it's great also to remember what makes things amazing. And I love the oboe; I think it's a fantastic instrument. So I wanted to write a piece that was new, but and contemporary, but a piece that really aimed to. To, to, to share what, what makes the oboe amazing and those sounds that I think you know, are so evocative for me and why I love it. Um, so that's really what I was trying to do with the piece. So hope you like it. <laughs> And we have another composer from England, Louise Vincent. Where is she? Hi, Louise, how are you? Hi, Robert, I'm fine, thank you. Can you hear me okay? I hear you perfect. You're coming in Great. loud and clear. Okay. <laughs> So where in England are you from? Uh, I'm from the middle of England in the Peak District, which is probably nearer to Sheffield. Awesome. And why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your piece? Yeah, so I'm a, I've composed music probably since I was about 12 or 13. And even when I temporarily moved away from music, it was, the, the music never really moved away from me. And so eventually I came back to it. And what I'm interested in my music is always taking it to a new place, moving beyond the known, whether that's taking the audience, hopefully, to a, a new place, 
um, beyond the everyday, or whether it's using new sounds uh, or extended techniques, but always, always with a purpose. So at the beginning of this piece, um, it's called When Light Breaks. And it's, it's about how light reflects on water and how that can fragment when the water surface gets rippled. And so at the very beginning, there are multiphonics and the rest of the piece is actually built on those multiphonics. Um, and many of them are microtones. And towards the end of the piece, as the water level is out again and becomes more reflective on the surface, then it becomes more diatonic and the intervals spread out as well and become bigger. Fabulous. Well, can't wait to hear it. Hey, Jim, how's it going? Pretty good, Robert. Great to see you again. Good to see you again, too. Uh, Jim, you're a, a, a returning regular, I guess is the right <laughs> right word. Um, uh, how are you doing? Well, why don't you tell everybody where you hail from? I will. Um, I'm uh, living about an hour south of Boston in Rhode Island, in Smithfield, Rhode Island. And um, I... I'm on the faculty of the uh, Boston Conservatory at Berkeley. I teach music theory up there. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I guess one of the reasons why I uh, continue to submit pieces for consideration here is because I um, find that I really love the 
challenge of writing these short pieces. You know, the first time I tried it, I thought it was going to be uh, extremely difficult to do what needed to be done in that short amount of time. But um, I find it a wonderful challenge now and just, you know, really enjoy doing that. Um, so this piece is called Aulit, and it, it references the uh, Greek aulos, which is a double reed instrument. Um, I should say was a double reed instrument from ancient times. And I'm kind of conflating a couple of different ideas here. The word aulit simply means a player of the aulos, but um, I'm kind of comparing it in a way to athlete. And I, I think of this piece as being kind of almost like a floor exercise of a gymnast, but for for an oboe player. <laughs> well, that sounds great. I, I definitely think, um, you know, uh, 15 minutes of fame in general is a little bit of a, a athletic feat for <laughs> musicians. Uh, let's see how uh, Ava does. I, I already give her a 10. Awesome. Ten. Um, let's bring on our next composer, uh, so a composer from San Diego, Michael Roth. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing Robert. Well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why don't you tell us? You're going to yeah, ask me a question, why don't you? But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> question, answer, question, answer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, Michael, thank you for uh, submitting and joining us, you know, for uh, 15 minutes of fame. Sure. I, I, I have to stop and say, and, you know, uh, to all the composers here and all the composers that have submitted to both this 15 minutes of fame and, and several of the others, it's just, uh, it's, it's great to have everyone supporting and being part of this project. Um, but yeah, uh, Michael, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, who you are and, you um, what you do and what this piece is about. Oh, okay. Um, I am, um, well, yes, I, I'm in San Diego right now. I split my time between San Diego and Los Angeles. I compose a lot of music, <laughs> um, uh, so a fair amount of chamber and new opera, but also a fair amount of music for, for, and film. So I kind of cover whatever waterfront that is. Um, first of all, I just want to commend Ava because, good Lord, this is not an easy way to spend a Saturday afternoon. So it, it's just great doing this. Um, so um, I think counterpoint is really interesting. And so among the challenges of saying, OK, write something a minute long for an oboe was I wanted to do something else, too, that could be counterpoint. Um, I won't say what that is. I hope Ava's cool with it. and. Um, and that's why the title is Got Feet. Maybe that's a uh, something of a hint. I also, there's a slight, uh, also, you know, there's a bit of rock and roll in me. I can't help it. So that's kind of in there too. And because uh, I embrace it. And there's a little bit of a John Lennon quote too. So that's really what the piece is about. So see you in a minute or two, you know? See you in a minute. Yeah.
Salve a tutti, mi chiamo Andrea Montalbano e sono un musicista e un insegnante italiano e vivo e lavoro in Sicilia. Sono molto contento che Eva Wirt suonerà il mio brano Structural Exploration, scritto appositamente per questa occasione. La composizione, eh, come il titolo suggerisce, fa pensare appunto a una struttura immaginaria, costituita da diverse melodie eh, che attraverso il loro continuo mutamento e movimento conducono l'ascoltatore nell'esplorazione di questa struttura. Spero vivamente che il brano sia di vostro gradimento e vi ringrazio per l'attenzione. Awesome, Ava. Definitely off to the races. Meanwhile, um, let's bring on our next composer, Adam Walters. Adam, how are you? Hi, Robert. Very well, thanks. Thanks. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I am doing well. Adam, tell us, well, where are you hailing from today? So I'm in London, England. And um, so, yeah, I, I lived out in Trinidad and Tobago for nine years. Um, and that's where I really started to find a voice with my composition so a lot of my music is 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 influenced by the traditional styles of uh, Trinidad and Tobago okay. um, and more recently I've been looking at other sort of ways in I guess and um, and thinking about what, th things that might impact upon my musical choices so uh, this piece is an example of that so looking at uh, pairs of triads um, that one is the reflection of another one um, and so trying to trying to force myself to break away from um, straightforwardly diatonic music, I guess, and to find a, a way to, to do that with some sort of underlying structure. Got you. Well, yeah, I'm excited to hear it. Let's, uh, let's bring on Ava. Thank you. Thank you.
Hello, I'm Michael Koss, and my piece is called Holbein's Lines. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Ava Wirth for choosing this piece and for working on it, and Bob Voicey for organizing this project, which I think is really wonderful. Um, Holbein's Lines is inspired by three portrait sketches by Hans Holbein the Younger, the court artist of Henry VIII. Um, I chose to include uh, miniature reproductions of the sketches in the score itself in order to perhaps inspire the performer, Ava, uh, with some of the power that I felt looking at these just evocative and, and beautiful works by Holbein's hand. Um, and this is a print of Holbein himself at age 34, which I thought would function as his signature in a way. And um, though, though drawn so many years ago, 500 years ago, uh, they have a, an element of uh, contemporaneous uh, uh, fashion and style that I think really speaks to our current time. And uh, I hope you really like it and uh, I appreciate you listening. Awesome. Awesome, Ava. Hi. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> Hi. Um, yeah, what a wonderful performance, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's, let's bring on Ava. Where is she? Hi, Ava. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> what a great performance, Ava. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all for writing such great pieces. It was so hard to pick. <laughs> I really felt like uh, once um, we brought in the athletes, you were like off and running and uh, 
the, the pieces just took off. Yeah, I, I definitely uh, gave myself a hard time, <laughs> but it was all great music. I am so happy to have gotten the chance to play it. Awesome. Um, does anybody have uh, anything they'd like to comment or, or well, how about this? Would in overall, what does everybody think about 15 minutes of fame and this format and, um, yeah, just your thoughts and ideas about it. We, we, we were talking about it before we were Robert, and I think I think I was saying many of the things that uh, you were, Jim. That uh, there's some, it's a great discipline to write a piece in in a minute. It forces you to really, really think hard about what what you're trying to say, and and strip everything that's just nonsense out there, and be be so concise. And it's such a wonderful discipline. I think yeah, it's one of the reasons I love. I love writing these pieces that you know, if you get into the practice of doing it in one minute, you can try to write something in three minutes. And if you can write with the same precision in, in, in a three minute piece that you can in a one minute piece, I, th I think overall you write better music. I think. And, uh, I think it's just such a wonderful, wonderful discipline and a wonderful opportunity to write something that, you know, it takes even writing a minute of music takes quite a long time, doesn't it? Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's much quicker to write a minute than 15 minutes, that's for sure. But, uh, you know, to write something in a minute, get it played, you know, get feedback on it, um, hear, hear, hear somebody actually play it. I think I, I learned so much from just hearing somebody actually play it. But, you know, when I try to write and get an AI machine to, to tell me what it sounds like, it's it gets you so far but it, it's no it's no substitute for hearing somebody actually play it so i think opportunities like this for me are amazing just to just, you know to get somebody uh, an amazing oboist like you know to play, to play my music but it's absolutely I mean, it's an honor and privilege and and also just really helpful for, for helping me so yeah i mean i, I mean i'm a big fan <laughs> big fan of the project <laughs> And, you know, let me uh, ask a question to Ava. So, Ava, what's it like to... I, I know you play a lot of new music and you do it with the Blank Ensemble, but in for this project and getting, like, solo pieces written for you, I mean, how does that compare to what you've done in the past or in, and right now? Um, yeah, so, I mean, I... I... I love to play chamber music, I love to play solo music, and I love to play contemporary music especially. Um, and so I feel like as a contemporary oboist, um, I see a lot of people writing for like saxophone and clarinet, and I wanted to give people the opportunity to write for oboe. Because oboe is like, you know, very fast and stuff, and I'm like, are people just not writing as much for it because there's not a lot of us doing it? So I wanted to have the opportunity for people to hear what it sounds like on the oboe and what their thoughts are and you know see what people are thinking for it as well and i'm really happy that i did this it was great well you know that's a good question too so i mean when we first started um talking about this project together uh i was really excited because uh i 15 minutes of fame has been lucky enough to we've done over 75 different ensembles but right off the top of the head i couldn't remember like one that we did with oboe so we, we usually don't Oboe isn't one of our common instruments. Um, have, do the composers find that there's not that many opportunities for oboe, or what's 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 your thoughts on that? Um, <laughs> I think it's quite good that it, it, it's only a minute because <laughs> it makes it a lot easier in some ways. Right. Um, I, uh, I I think it very much depends on the resources that you have. I mean, I I have a a contemporary music group, and we have a good oboist in that, so I can run a lot of things by him. But he did blanch a little when I showed him the piece I'd written for Ava. Um, so. Uh... <laughs> yeah. That, so Ava, you're you're definitely a champion because I could. Uh, it, it was definitely a, a little bit of a, a marathon and a sprint at the same time. It's awesome. <laughs> your group. Um, yeah. Um, cool. So, can, can I just say, I, mean, I one of the things I found really interesting about this project is it's, it's really started to 
tease away in my mind what what exactly contemporary music is all about and i was trying to sort of say this a little bit earlier but you know i, I think it's fantastic this this experimentation with new sounds when you think about the role of a composer trying to get an instrument to do more new things uh and really push the boundaries of what an instrument can do but trying to balance that with well what what you know, there's exploring what an instrument can do, and there's exploring what an instrument does best. And I, and I think I think there's this interesting tension between trying to be novel and trying to push push the boundaries of music, but also without you know you don't want to go off charging over a hill and not bring any everybody with you. You know, and and I I, I think you know it's quite, it's a, as a composer, it's really hard to find that balance of you know, uh, trying to write something that people will still relate to and that you're know, using some of these techniques purposefully. And I think you, 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 you talked about this, you know, it's not just about throwing in extended techniques for the sake of it, it's giving them some sense of purpose so that when an audience listens to it, it's, it's got a sense of context and, and, and purpose. But I, I think that's one of the challenges with contemporary music is, you know, it's this, it's this tension between trying to trying to push things forward, but at the same time not being too 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 abstract, and so that everybody doesn't really understand it. I mean, I mean, and and I suppose the danger in my mind is if all the new music is just this leading edge crazy kind of stuff. Well, what does that mean for the stuff that is a bit more relatable? Does that just stagnate? And I think. Um, you know, I, I, as a composer, you're trying to decide, well, do, do, I, do I try and push things forward or do I do, I do something that's maybe a little bit less um, adventurous, but is, is trying to expand the repertoire in a, in a more broad, yeah, uh, relatable way, I think, if that makes any sense. I think that's what, that's, what, that's what all these thoughts came, when this project came up, those were all the things that went through my mind as to, do, do I position it here? Do I position it here? What, what do I want to do with this? And that, 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 that for me was what was really interesting. It's that thought process. Right. Yeah. Well, and, you know, so let me uh, maybe reveal some of the, like, my objectives and part of the reasons why I pursue uh, this particular genre and format is that that that's kind of a common uh, hurdle or obstacle for both producers, musicians, and composers, right? Because, um, you know, what what is contemporary music? What could it be? Are we pushing the boundaries? Are, or do we stay in a safe zone? Because, you know, it's, it's easier, more accessible, um, you know, more programmable. Um, and, you know, I, I get a lot of questions about 15 Minutes of Fame or some of the other projects are like, you know, where people ask me like, oh, what should I write or what type of music are you looking for? And I always say the same answer for the projects is write what you want to write. And because that's where it will come out to be the strongest. And... And the one minute format is great. Like, I understand, you know, it's, you know, it's difficult, but you can concentrate on whatever idea or whatever technique or whatever thing that you do best and just put, put your heart and soul into it and then send it out. And even though like, sadly, we could only pick 15, right? It's, I, I, I like the project because 15 is a lot but it's still only a percentage of the pieces that we come in. Um, and I, I guess to encourage everybody who wasn't selected for this mix, there's still hope. There's uh, a lot of the musicians, uh, when they get the pieces, there are things that they couldn't program because of a lot of different reasons. Either they couldn't learn every single hard piece they wanted to play. Um, they just felt like it didn't meet the set or, you know, there's just a multitude of different reasons, but they still loved it. And it might get in on a, um, on one of their encores in the future, or they might contact the composer and say, I love this minute. Can you make me more? And, uh, anyway, that's, that's, that's part of my design behind the project and producing it. Um, <laughs> Dave, you want to say anything else or? Uh, I mean, 
yeah, like like how Robert was saying, you know, there's a there's so many more opportunities for you know if your piece didn't get chosen, it doesn't mean it wasn't good. Like when I was going through taking notes, I had like something good to say out of like for every single piece that I looked at, and I think there were over ninety. So choosing these fifteen pieces, I think, was like some of the hardest musical experiences I've had in my career so far, honestly. Um, and I would love to give myself the opportunity to play more of these works, just like how I got to today with these 15. Um, it really is fantastic getting to look at what everyone has written and showing such a diverse like style of composition that everyone has right now. It's really a great project, I think. And let me just say thank you, Ava. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it's thank awesome. you for having mm -hmm. me. Thank you, Ava. Thank you. Thank you. Fabulous. Well, everyone, I want to thank you all for being a part of this project. And, um, you know, we have um, several more on the horizon. Um, most notably, David Bone, uh, he is uh, playing for the Taisha Goto. He's got, um, yeah, it's a wonderful Japanese instrument. Uh, that's going to be that 50 minutes of fame. I definitely encourage everyone if you haven't written a piece for the Taisha Goto he's got some instructional <laughs> videos that are out there uh he is an awesome composer and musician a big big fan of 15 bits of fame and miniatures and so forth and um we just finished a toy toy piano project from him or we're finishing it up of which just because see how uh of a monster he is about the project he got 100 submissions exactly and has done four sets for toy piano so that she played 60 out of the 100 just just here you know and looking to do record a couple more so you know it's uh so yeah if you haven't written for the taisha goto i would definitely like check him out and write for something we also uh just to talk about some other projects from vox novus we have two more calls that are well three more calls one for uh, 60 by 60 which is the one minute electronic version of 15 minutes of fame so if you like to write electronic music just uh, submit one minute of that um, we're going to be collaborating with dancers and um, I just I can't say more good things about that project it's been a lot of fun and so forth so I recommend everybody to, to do that and then we also have another call for scores for Composer's Voice, which is longer works for uh, Tala Rouge. They're a, a viola duo, uh, also a great new group. That's They're just amazing performers, and I think they would be awesome to write for. I strongly encourage that. And then I'm doing this other production project. It's a little bit different from what I do from... Uh, most of the stuff from Vox Novus, but uh, it's for string quartets, and we help composers produce their string quartets. Um, I've, everybody's got a string quartet in their pocket that's never been played before. Um, you know, and during the pandemic, you know, when the composers were, uh, not composers, when musicians, composers didn't have a hard time in the pandemic, right? We just all <laughs> sat, sat there and kept writing, kept writing, and so forth. Uh, but it was tough for musicians, and so I started this production project in order to sort of just keep them, you know, going. And, uh, yeah, so that project goes. I recommend everybody taking a look at that, too. Um, thank you all, again, for being a part of this project. I can't tell you how much. Without the composers writing the music, we wouldn't be anywhere. And, uh, yeah, well, hopefully I'll see you uh, again and again and again and again. Super. Thank, thank you, Robert. Thank you, Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you again. And Ava, um, you know, I look forward to seeing you more uh, in the near future as well. If not uh, just solo, then with the blank experiment. Yeah, uh, check us out. <laughs> yes, everybody. Oh, I should definitely check check out the blank experiment they are a fabulous fabulous ensemble with a lot of great players in it and uh ava again thank you wonderful performance yeah thank you so much and we'll see you soon <laughs>